Welcome to ESPN Thursday Night Showcase presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, part of Rivalry Week presented by Wendy's. A battle for second place in the Pac-12 as the UCLA Bruins enter this game with a 7-3 mark in conference play. They've won four of their last five and currently trail just Arizona. Colorado has won three straight to get the 7-4, but all of those wins were at home. Now they venture on the road to Pauly. Play the Bruins with Hall of Famer Bill Walton, former UCLA star. I'm Dave Pash, and Bill, UCLA trying to separate itself from some of the other teams like Colorado in the Pac-12. And the Buffaloes trying to get their first marquee win without Spencer Dinwiddie, who's out for the year with a knee injury. Dave, all you need to do to separate is walk outside in this wonderful world full of beautiful people right here on the campus of UCLA. The celebration well underway. UCLA, though, plagued by a little bit of inconsistency. Up and down, they play well against the good teams, but then don't really bring it against the teams that may not be so high in the standings there. So what they have to do is utilize their home court advantage against the hottest team in the conference, the Colorado Buffaloes, who have three real good players. They have stabilized themselves, the Buffaloes, since they lost Dinwiddie, so it's really happening. All right, take us through the one-on-one -on -one in 20 seconds or less. The Colorado Buffaloes walk like a giant, don't float like a leaf. Somebody step up and be a man. That's got to be a ski of Booker and Big X Johnson. They're both from Los Angeles, and then Josh Scott, anchor in the middle. He's a Colorado Front Range native. For the UCLA Bruins, they have size, speed advantages. They've got to maximize those. The Bruins are at their best when they force turnovers and convert in the open court. That was the difference when UCLA won handily up in Boulder. Colorado and UCLA coming up from Pauley. Starting lineups and tip-off next. Peanut butter cups, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter, and in part by the new 2014 Scion TC. It's a knockout. A pair of 18 win teams square off inside Pauley Pavilion on the campus of UCLA, Colorado. The Buffaloes 7 and 4, tied for third in the Pac-12. And with Wesley Gordon out for the second straight game due to a knee injury, Dustin Thomas will start for the second straight game. Askia Booker has been spectacular since the injury to Dinwiddie. Xavier Johnson coming off a career high 27 points in his last game against Washington. And for UCLA, Kyle Anderson, the leader in the conference in assists at six feet, nine inches tall. Jordan Adams, the leading scorer for UCLA, and Norman Powell in the win against Colorado last month, scored 19 points. In Boulder, Steve Alford first season here at UCLA after six years at New Mexico. He is 3-0, or UCLA 3-0, I should say, against Colorado since the Buffaloes joined the Pac-12, and their only loss all time to Colorado is back in 1962. But things are different under Tad Boyle. First time in school history with four straight years of 18 or more wins, and if they win the night, it would be their first four-game win streak in conference play going back to 2006. Yes, well, they won the conference tournament when their first year of the conference tournament for the Buffaloes here, but regular season speaking. Conference games, four of them in a row. That's what they're going for right now. They start out with his own defense, which is the antithesis of what Ted Boyle normally likes to play, but he's going to mix it up here. And Adams from outside, off the mark on a three, batted out by Ware. And one of the reasons why he is playing zone is because of the injury to Wesley Gordon, who's an excellent defender on Anderson. The tip by Travis Ware, so they got three looks at the rim on that first possession. Ted Boyle all day in practice said, somebody's got to get a rebound, please. And you give up two successive offensive rebounds, ending up with a throwdown. Please. Thomas, as we mentioned, getting a start. He's a freshman to turnover as Booker stepped on the sideline. A ski of Booker has really been good since the Dinwiddie injury, but most of his numbers have come at home. His scoring on the road is half of what it is at home, and he shoots about 22% from the floor and is one of 12 from three on the road. Good start for the Ware Twins. That's a three to make it 5 nothing. Not the start that Tad Boyle wanted. Establish yourself early. Last time we had Colorado on this network, 
They got bullied. They got pushed around at Arizona. They can ill afford to have that kind of start here tonight at Pauley. Here's Johnson for three. A brick in his first shot. We mentioned his terrific outing against Washington. We talked about him being from Los Angeles. In fact, three of the Colorado five starters are from the Los Angeles area. Adams misses another three point try. He's 0 for 2. Josh Scott and Big X Johnson, they have got to position themselves higher up the lane defensively to give themselves a better read on those long missed threes. Here's Scott putting it on the floor. Tough shot, but Josh Scott, sophomore, who's averaging 14 points per game, gets the first deuce for Colorado tonight. This is such a young Colorado team. Tad Boyle, the most successful coach in the history of Colorado basketball. And a turnover by Anderson. Numbers for Colorado. And Jordan Adams, who leads the Pac-12 at three steals per game with great anticipation, stepping in front of that bounce pass. And then Ware with another basket. Anderson with the dish. And how about the Ware twins? They've got all seven. David with three, Travis with four. Colorado cannot allow UCLA to just run up and down and shoot wide open shots whenever they want and dominate the glass. Booker with the left hand can't get the scoop and it's cleared by David Ware. It's a mismatch early here. All in favor of UCLA. Anderson strokes it through from the elbow and it's nine to two. And what happens in this type of scenario is that the Bruins the home team they start riding this raucous crowd here and they just fist swell with confidence and emotional surge here to get it done big time. John's going to take it to the rim draw the foul. He'll shoot two. That's the first foul on UCLA. It will go on David Ware. Kyle Anderson the offensive engine here down the lane able to draw all kinds of defenders and no defensive rotation whatsoever. His size advantage gives him such a mismatch literally against everybody he plays against his ability to pull up and hit that shot something he's not really looking to do it really separates him from the rest of the crowd in this conference where do you put him in the Pac-12 player of the year conversation as you look at Xavier Johnson he's up there but Nick Johnson Dwight Powell Jaheed Carson but think about what Anderson does for his team. He, he leads the conference in assists. He averages nine rebounds per game. He scores. He shoots 50% from three, and his team is second place in the league. As Travis Ware has six points early on. He averages six per game. But if Arizona continues to play well, how are you going to not give it sure. to their best player, Nick Johnson? Yep. I'm with him. But Johnson oh. has struggled the last few games. We'll see how he plays tomorrow night against Arizona State. Since the Ashley injury, Johnson has not played his best offensive basketball. Booker with the jumper. They need him tonight. A junior from Price High School in Los Angeles. 11-5 UCLA. Who's going to be that guy for Colorado that says, we can get this done? This is such a young squad. Having to totally revamp everything that they did with the loss of Dinwiddie. The three guys, Astia Booker, Big X Johnson, and then Josh Scott, they're the guys. Another great look by Anderson and Jordan Adams with his first basket. How about the vision of Anderson? One of the problems for the Buffaloes is that they don't keep their hands up defensively. Good point. So all those passing lanes, which would be normally negated, beautiful finish by Josh Scott. So a three point chance here for Scott. Another foul on UCLA. Kyle Anderson again, time and again, down that lane, throwing defenders. And with everybody put their hands down defensively for the Buffalo, they are up against it. These wicked Over Colorado, be sure to catch a primetime doubleheader Saturday on ESPN. Assuming they get the snow uh, out of Durham, Krzyzewskiville was covered today. It's Duke and Maryland, then at 9, an SEC battle. Florida in Kentucky. The Gators yet to lose in conference play. That's our Saturday primetime game presented by DirecTV. We didn't have those weather issues here in Southern California today. No. Beautiful day here. Beautiful day inside tonight because of Kyle Anderson, who has sparked an offensive explosion here for UCLA. He's his ability to set up the offense and create opportunities for the Ware twins, David and Travis, who already have nine points combined. But David Ware just picked up his second foul as the three point uh, 
conversion for Josh Scott getting the free throw. So Tony Parker's in the game. Tony Parker's been so up and down. Did not score against USC. Played only 11 minutes. He also had a game recently against Cal where he played just seven minutes. He also had a game where he had 22 points. Right. And led the Bruins to a much needed victory. Got to get consistent. Needs to stay out of foul trouble. Here's Anderson, a step back two, able to hit over the outstretched arm of Dustin Thomas. Welcome to the Pac-12, Dustin Thomas, just a freshman coming in for Little X. Oh, now it's a great play finally for Big X Johnson. Is that the nickname you gave him, or is that his real nickname? Big That's X. his real nickname. Big X? Big X, and then there's Little X. That's Xavier Johnson, a sophomore from Notre Dame High School. Here in the Los Angeles area. Howell on the drive, can't finish. Here comes Colorado down four. This defensive matchup out in front, Howell and the ski of Booker, critical both ways. And Tony Parker picking up the foul. That's the third on UCLA. No fouls yet on Colorado, so free throws here for Dustin Thomas, who started his first game against Washington in the last time out. That was Sunday, Colorado's biggest win of the year, 91-65. And Thomas fouled out after scoring three points and grabbing four rebounds. So then through the algebraic theory, if Colorado pummels Washington and Washington takes down Stanford last night, that, that makes Colorado right up there at the top. And a victory here tonight at Pauley Pavilion, although we haven't seen any ability to control things right now, that would put Colorado right in the thick of things. And I appreciate uh, your... Uh, Map skills, given your history as an academic All-American. You were an algebra whiz, weren't you? I love math. Apparently, you don't pay too much to it during our games. Here's Booker with a pull-up jumper. Had a chance to tie it there. It, it's 15-13. <laughs> That's it. That's a two-point lead for the home team. Here's a steal by Scott stepping in front of that pass. And now Booker driving the lane and getting the layup. Second field goal for Booker. What a recovery for the Buffaloes. Now they're stampeding here. The Bruins back on their heels. And Coach Alford has gone to his perimeter offensive game with the guys off the bench, the couple of freshmen. 7-0 run, 10-2 for Colorado in the last couple minutes. And now a chance to take the lead. Oh. As Scott had trouble handling that pass. Now Booker looks to uh, the bench as if to say, he's got to catch that ball. I put it right in the bread basket. All you want is effort on plays like that. Josh Scott just getting started in what promises to be a wonderful basketball career for him. Get up and down the court, get him the ball. Lots of touches, and Zach Levine continues to get shots off. Now he's not shot, no question. Here's a long three-pointer that won't go for Xavier Johnson. Here comes Anderson. I'm not sure Colorado wants to play that kind of pace against UCLA. I would agree. Foul line jump for no good. UCLA just one of its last six. Booker in the lane, wow. able to hang and find Scott. And Booker penetrating several times things have fallen. baskets for Scott he's got seven points things have fallen apart for UCLA they look perfect at the beginning and now they trail here on their home court what has happened in Los Angeles Los Angeles where you spent many a day when you were two time when I wasn't when I wasn't in church or in the library I was stuck in traffic Believe it or not, they still have not fixed the 405, <laughs> which which they started working on when I got here 44 years ago. Well, as long as you can make it onto the 405 and somehow get to the airport so you can be there tomorrow night for our third game in three nights in three cities, Arizona, Arizona State, 9 Eastern on ESPN. As Levine loses it out of bounds, it will stay with UCLA. That promises to be a thriller. Right now, we're waiting for UCLA to sustain what they had going at the opening moments here. Coach Alford just beside himself over there, over this turn of events, and very much like what happened in the USC game in the Bruins' last outing. Beautiful delivery on the duck in from the weak side. And Tony Parker with the basket, and almost a turnover by Colorado. Eli Stalls are having trouble with it. 
And good hands by Adams. Boy, how quick is Adams with his feet, his hands. He leads the conference in steals, already has one, and that was a great strip there on the drive by Xavier Johnson. And with the athletic abilities of this UCLA team, you'd think that they would try to extend the defense a little bit more. But with the continuing rotation of Norman Powell to the bench, it makes it very difficult. And George King, another freshman for Colorado, onto the floor. Buffaloes have won three in a row. This is the eighth game they've played since Spencer Dinwiddie suffered a torn ACL against Washington. The first game after that injury was against UCLA, and Buffaloes did not play well in that game. They're four and three overall since the injury. As stalls are knocked down the jumper, Colorado on top by two. How about little Eli there? Huh? Four players in this game tonight all went to the same high school. Not all at the same time, but Stalzer, Little Eli, Big X, and then the Ware Twins. All went to modern day down in Orange County there. Bryce Alford on the floor for UCLA. Anderson's jumper not good. Adams is there. Colorado still unable to rebound on the defensive end. Anderson in the lane, no, but he's fouled. He'll shoot two when we come back. And also when we come back, our first edition of Walton's World, where somebody other than Bill gets to talk. Colorado leading UCLA by two. Time now for this edition of Walton's World, where we spoke with some coaches and university officials about John Wooden's pyramid of success and what it's meant to UCLA. The period of success is, was embodied in everything that he did, and certainly it serves as a cornerstone and the foundation for, for our program today. There's a set of principles, there's a blueprint already in place of what it means to uh, live in a way that hopefully leads to competitive greatness. Um, but the reality is that the foundation and the daily blocks are the most important thing, and it really determines the path to life. Competitive greatness is probably something I strive for every day with this team as a leader, and I remember it as a player that being at your best when your best is required, and the bottom line is that's every day. Coach Wood was an English teacher by profession who happened to have young people under his athletic supervision in the afternoon. He wrote his master's thesis on how to teach poetry. He had different poets than I do. He had Shakespeare, Longfellow, Frost, Daly. I had Bob Dylan. Jerry Garcia, Neil Young, Coach Wood was a three-time All-America player at UCL at Purdue, 10 championships, fantastic winning percentage. They played a lot fewer games in those days. And then a long winning streak that sadly came to an end here because of me. <laughs> but all the stuff that Coach Wooden taught you had nothing to do with basketball. He never talked about the game. He never talked about winning and losing. He never talked about the score, he never talked about strategy, we never watched film, we never had a play, we never called timeout. He only mentioned the other team twice in four years. We lost both games. Thanks a lot, Coach. But here was a guy who was genuinely concerned about how you were going to develop as a human being. And that's why that he wrote to me on the day I graduated to Bill Walton. It's the things you learn after you know it all that really count. John Wooden. So it was his way of saying he learned something from you, correct? It was his way of saying, thanks for having, uh, thanks for coming. We're going to miss you. There's a block by Parker and then out of bounds off of Colorado. Now, you know how today coaches try to adapt to their players. They'll, they'll listen to their songs. You know, Mac Brown of Texas is known for that, the football coach there. Do you think if iPods were around back then that he would listen to the Grateful Dead? Oh, I asked him to go on a constant basis. Grateful Dead played here six times during Coach Wooden's lifetime. Jerry Garcia band played here three different times. Did he go? He never went, sadly. He always wanted me to go with him to the Lawrence Welk concert. Did you go? No, I. we both sadly passed. But Lawrence Welk was tremendous. Another San Diego. So a turnover by UCLA. One point Colorado lead. The Bruins had an early lead and were in command, but they've gone cold. There is a 7 nothing run. UCLA at one point was up eight in this game. Skia Booker with four points and three assists. The dunk attempt by Jerron Hopkins rejected. And now Levine has it taken away by Booker. What a play. Hopkins up the floor with a big time jam. Wow, what a turn of events. Ski Booker just on top of it defensively. 
Do you get the sense that when Zach Levine has the ball, he's looking to get it up? You mean shoot? Yes. Yeah, I, I was going to say the same thing. As <laughs> oh, great has shot. it. Wanted by Josh Scott. Booker again in transition. Nice pass. Easy two for Hopkins. This is incredible. Steve Alford needs another timeout. Oh, my goodness gracious. What has happened to the Bruins? How about Colorado though? Let's give them some credit for no, what they've been able to do. Absolutely. Colorado has completely taken charge. They're playing with the spirit that we saw them exhibit in practice today. Tad Boyle just fired up as can be about this incredible opportunity to come into this temple, this sanctuary, this mecca of college basketball, the transition opportunities. Right now, Colorado is doing everything and the stampede is on. How about Bill, the fact that you know, UCLA wants to get out and run. And Tad Boyle said, look, if there's a turnover on the perimeter tonight, it's a layup the other way. But it's Colorado that's getting out in transition and, and getting fast break baskets. UCLA is only running one way. The uphill downhill story. And with Askia Booker playing beautiful basketball after the opening minutes, his family is here, his friends are here. He's from downtown Los Angeles, went to the same high school as Alan Crabb and Richard Solomon, a couple of Cal stars. The last couple of years, Mike Lynch, the fantastic coach down there. Price High School, just in the shadow of USC. He has 46 points his last two games coming into tonight. Has four points and five assists already. And now Tony Parker called for the offensive foul. So that's two on him. David Ware also has two. I'm not sure if Scott, if Josh Scott would go down that hard if he got hit by a truck on the 405 freeway. Are you saying he flopped? Please. I mean, he, there are two guys standing still, and all of a sudden one guy's lying flat on his back. And the guy lying flat on his back is bigger and stronger. Did you ever flop when you played? No. It's a different world. I tried to play defense. Bill Russell was my hero. Yeah, we, we learned that last night. In his 80th uh, birthday celebration on our air. Beautiful execution there. You got to finish that one, Josh Scott. Yeah, instead of going baseline, he throws up a shot, but gets it back and finishes the second time. And now an eight point UCLA lead is turned into a seven point Colorado advantage. Scott with nine points in the first half. And my computer, like mine, tells me that's a 15 point switch. Very good. Algebra. Only three points the last six minutes or so. For UCLA, 17 to 3 run by Colorado. Alford off the mark from three. He is three for his last 20 from three point land. He's really struggled here in conference play. Booker with a three. A ski of Booker taking over this game, and it's a 10 point advantage. This is more shocking than Washington's win against Stanford last night. Well, we said Colorado, hottest team, three straight wins coming off. A 26 point victory against Washington. Offensive foul again. It's all Colorado, and they're starting to believe Coach Alford can only go to his bench and bring back his stars, his veteran leaders, Jordan Adams and Kyle Anderson. And yeah, that was Zach Levine who had the charge. Juana Bale is on the floor. Freshman, this is only his eighth game, but he has to play because of the foul trouble with David Ware and Tony Parker. And Bale had knee surgery in June, so. Taking a while for him to get back to 100%. He's a talented freshman out of Houston. Getting a lot of minutes here in the first half because of foul trouble. The most athletically gifted player on this team, with the exception of Zach Levine, who's much more of a perimeter and life explosive player. Wild foray that time. Yeah, Dustin Thomas, but he did get it back. UCLA getting out hustled right now. Booker has it blocked by Bale. And UCLA is not capitalizing on their advantage of quickness and size. Levine for three. Hit it. The Bruins needed that. First three pointer for Zach Levine. Second triple for the Bruins. The problem for UCLA is that they have allowed Colorado to find their rhythm and start believing in themselves. Scott face up jumper. Beautiful. We've seen him go to his left hand on several occasions and also shoot the jumper. He's got 11 points, five of six from the floor. 
We're seeing the complete package by Josh Scott. Grew up in Monument, Colorado, there in the front range, Colorado Springs. Excellent basketball background there, athletic family. Adams lost it. Booker got Whoa. caught in the air but found a man. And Colorado out of control here and going to be traveling violation on the Buffalo. So Colorado right now and Ted Boyle, the most successful coach in the history of this program. Colorado now a basketball school. Who would have ever thought that? A ski of Booker in transition and there's nothing the retreating Bruins can do about that. Hub of college basketball at ESPN on Valentine's Day, a terrific rivalry, Arizona, Arizona State. Wildcats have lost just once this year. They're ranked number two in the country. And two of the best guards in the Pac-12 will be on display. Nick Johnson for Arizona, Jahi Carson for Arizona State, who was the co-freshman of the year in the Pac-12 last year, along with Shabazz Muhammad. And while Jahi and Nick get the well-deserved credit, there are so many other things going on. Spend your day at Palm Walk over there. Check out all the beautiful sights in Tempe and then do yourself a favor and learn a little bit about Shaquille McKissick and Jermaine Marshall for Arizona State the Sun Devils two great stories of young men building lives there over there for Herb Sendek what a program he's got going how about that save attempt by Talton is we're going to get a foul here on Booker that's only the second on Colorado Talton threw that ball in the air and it went it went over the, the backboard and back into play as well as Colorado's playing right now. I'm surprised it didn't go in. <laughs> By the way, you're welcome to come over for a cup of coffee tomorrow since we'll be in uh, Arizona. If you have hot water, I'll consider it. No teepee, though, so I don't know what we'll do for uh, room and board. I've got friends there in, Colorado, in Arizona that can help. Levine in and out. And Booker tried to get out on the fast break again. For the Ware Twins, we're back on the floor now. They had nine points in the first four minutes, but they've been scoreless since, and no one else has stepped up. David Ware tries again, and a strong board by Xavier Johnson. You know, you get careless fouls, you get rotated out, you lose your rhythm, you have a difficult time getting it going again. Three-pointer by Xavier Talton, and it's a 12-point Colorado lead. Colorado showing us now why they are the hottest team in the conference and the level of skill the level of confidence the level of teamwork the level of resiliency great Anderson. oh my god that ball was blocked by josh scott it still went in that's how good kyle anderson is that's seven points now for anderson colorado's largest lead at 12 just a moment ago another three point oh. try this one way off the mark from dustin thomas Here's Anderson has done everything so far and can't get that one but he'll go to the line for two free throws. Kyle Anderson going to his right against a bigger stronger more gifted athletically player and he just kisses it high off the glass. What a supreme performer here for UCLA. But it's got to be disconcerting for Coach Alford because this is a guy who is a fabulous player himself, a championship player, and right now his players are not showing the sort of enthusiastic commitment that you have to have. You're the second best team in this conference, and you're moving towards the tournament. You just played your last game against USC, your conference rival, and you're getting pounded on their court in the first half and playing a lethargic game. And Coach Alford had to chew the guys out at the halftime, and they came out and they played brilliantly in the second half, but right now they're back to being flat once again and yeah, they're very streaky they have the loss at Oregon State again really they, they shouldn't lose we had them here against Arizona where they were down for a while then they got hot tied the game but didn't play well at the end we also had the game here against Alabama where they didn't play that great so they've had that kind of lethargy throughout been inconsistent zone defense here in the Buffalo are having trouble finding the range and they get the ball to Scott on the low block they're not even looking for him Hopkins caught in the air. Shot clock at three. Another three-pointer by Tolton. Little X making it all happen. He's Pat nine Boyle. for his last 11 for three-point land, Bill. Numbers. Algebra. Adams, strong move by Jordan Adams. Colorado's basket defense seems to be limited to just standing there 
motionless with your hands up in the air. You gotta get in the air yourself. You gotta come out on the floor and meet the guy before he's ready to jump. Colorado continuing to work the perimeter. Shot clock at seven. I love how the fans count early here. Levine deflected that pass for a turnover. UCLA ball down nine with three and a half to go here in the first half. Anderson hits Ware who gets the roll. Another basket for David Ware. He took a shot to the face, but appears to be all right. Colorado calls a timeout. Kyle Anderson just gets in the lane on a constant basis. How do you ever expect to win if you let the other team's best player do exactly what he wants to do? That guy is really a good basketball player, deceptive as can be. Change of pace, change of direction. Well, as you know, the Louisville Temple game was scheduled for tonight, postponed by snow. It will air on ESPN2 tomorrow night at 6 Eastern. Bill and I will be in Tempe for Territorial Cup, Arizona, Arizona State. And then Saturday at noon on ESPN, UConn and Memphis. That'll be a good game, but tell me it's not snowing in Arizona, is it? Remember last year when we had a game in Tucson and it actually was snowing. I know I was, I was there for the I was there in Tucson for the tour to Tucson in November. Hello Josh. How are you today? And Who's Josh. Josh is the best thing that's happened to UCLA in so long. That guy is running the athletic department here now with Dan Guerrero and just absolutely terrific. All right, that was a person you were talking to on air. Josh yes. a moment ago. There he is. There's Josh. What, right a, there. what a great crew we have. See they've learned how to follow you Bill. <laughs> this is pretty good. Well, uh, Tim Sullivan, our producer, Craven Martin, our director, they have been to the edge of the biosphere and they have learned. Three minutes to go, seven point lead for the Buffaloes. They try to hit Scott. And go one on one here. He'll Don't any of the Buffaloes ever get to get to the free throw line? Adams misses another three pointer. He's 0 for 3 from behind the arc. Colorado has for 4 now, Adams, from three point land. Colorado has to work on their post entry passing. It's too slow, it's too late. Not crisp enough. Johnson's three off the mark. And UCLA ball. And Johnson with just one field goal after 27 points in his last game. Nearing two minutes to go here in the first half. Seven point Colorado lead. All for driving. Beautiful pass. And Powell an open three. Buries it. Norman Powell shoots only 21% from three point land. And a timeout with the deficit now for UCLA at four. Colorado takes the timeout. Two minutes remaining here at UCLA and Westwood. Saturday ESPN's journey to the tourney continues with Florida and Kentucky. The Gators have yet to lose in the SEC and some feel Florida is the best team in the country even though Syracuse is undefeated after that Tyler Ennis 35 footer last night. Florida has played an outstandingly difficult schedule. A lot of good road games that have prepared them for this enormous showdown at Kentucky one of those two teams Kentucky or Florida is going to be in this year's final four at Dallas. No, I don't know what you think but I'm just really surprised that people questioning Jamie Dixon last night for how he handled the last four seconds the guy hit a 35 footer <laughs> if he misses it no one brings it up. Jamie Dixon Pittsburgh has got a real good team. Syracuse is better. They were fortunate to win. What are they criticizing Jamie Dixon about. 
A timeout called at the end of the game as Colorado turns it over that allowed Syracuse to you know, set things up. But again, I I didn't see the game. I was working on Stanford, uh, Stanford, Washington. Was it last night? Yeah, they have this show called Sports Center where they have highlights. I know that you like to watch a lot of first take, but you may want to switch it over time to time. As Alford fires a two pointer, he's been struggling from three, so he takes it inside the arc, and it's a two point game. The Bruins have responded well out of Alford's timeouts. 9 nothing UCLA run over the last three minutes. Colorado is led by as many as 12 here in the first half. UCLA's defense is causing all kinds of problems for the Buffaloes. And now they're up against the shot clock again. And Booker drains it. He's got nine points. It's a completely different player, Steve Booker, than what we saw down in Arizona when the Buffaloes were just buffaloed. Pushed around. About a four second difference between game and shot clocks here. By the way, Booker also has six assists. Kyle Anderson has five assists and nine points for UCLA. And they've got Johnson defending him. Here's Alford. Shot clock at eight. Now, this is where Big X has just got to do his job defensively. Great pass by Anderson to where? Boy, Kyle Anderson makes it look so easy on the dribble. Two seconds left. Nice. To Scott for the jam, beats the buzzer. Wow. A great what a, what pass a on turn. one end and then Booker on the other end. Racing it back up through the net. Incredible turn of events. Colorado, Steve Booker. What about the job by Kyle Anderson to draw the entire defense? Askia Booker up against the clock. Josh Scott with the presence of mind to throw it down quickly and not wind it up. Easy play to call. Halftime, four point Buffaloes. Oh my goodness. Back to the studio, Colorado on top. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's and K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Colorado playing without three key players. Spencer Dinwiddie out for the year. Treshawn Fletcher still out with an knee injury. Wesley Gordon with an knee injury. But Askia Booker and Josh Scott combining for 22 points. They have stepped up for Colorado on the road trying to get a marquee win at UCLA. The guards on full display today with dazzling performances. Askia Booker down the lane playing in his hometown of Los Angeles setting up his teammates easy throwdowns in transition there drawing multiple defenders you would think that the defense would only come with one guy in a place to play like that but then Kyle Anderson has been right back for the Bruins as well doing literally the same thing just at a different pace playing his own game the deliberate precision the fundamentals the great footwork by Kyle Anderson and the improved outside shooting a wash here statistically which favors Askia Booker and his Buffaloes because Kyle Anderson is so critical to the Bruins attack. Right now, Askia Booker has been nicely supported by Josh Scott. Both teams shooting 50% or better. Both teams with 10 assists. A well-played offensive first half. Colorado leads UCLA by four. And a turnover by the Buffaloes like they started the first half. They give it away on their opening possession of this half. Adams. Misses inside, and Adams trying to track down a loose ball. He might have a foul here. Well, it was the first foul called of four fouls on that possession. They get Dustin Thomas. That's his second personal foul. And Jordan Adams now just two of eight from the field. Colorado has never won in Los Angeles. They've beaten UCLA once. That was back in 1962, playing in an on-campus facility up there in Boulder. This is their best chance in seeming forever. Travis Ware got off to a great start in the first half. That's the jumper. He and his twin brother David Ware did the damage early and had UCLA out to an eight point lead. And then Colorado got up one point by 12. But who can sustain here? Who right. can get something going early and then keep it? Happening? How about Adams? Again, the quick hands. Colorado can't even get a shot here to start the second half. Yeah, but Adams, such a good defender. On ball and as a secondary defender coming over getting steel. Well, he's a tough, fierce type of player that you want to have in every aspect of the game. 
He's struggling though from the field now two of nine and 0 for five from three. And he destroyed Colorado in the first game. We were talking to Tad Boyle and he said we've got to find a way to shut Jordan Adams down. Adams had 14 points but six offensive rebounds 13 rebounds at all in that first meeting. A UCLA win back on January 16th. But little X Tolton has done a very nice job there. Here's a ski of Booker just continuing a hot hit. This is the best I've ever seen him play. He has 11 points tonight averaging 21 over his last three. But with his parents here in attendance tonight how cool is that to be able to come back. Shining with all the stars of Los Angeles. David Ware from the baseline although no John Lithgow tonight I know you're disappointed he was here the last time we were in attendance. He'll be back. He's a big fan as we are of his. Here's Scott facing up he had 13 first half points. We saw a wide array of moves by him as Booker drains the three. Boy, a ski Booker, only a 30 percent three point shooter, but tonight he's been terrific from outside. He's completely in the zone. Why UCLA is not guarding him all the time beyond comprehension. In his last three road games at conference play, he was 0 for 8 from 3, but he's 2 for 2 tonight. UCLA comes right back and cuts the Colorado lead to 2. Offensive foul, Josh Scott trying to get position. Ski Booker now cast for the really first time in his career as a lead player, as opposed to the complimentary player to Alan Crabb in high school. Spencer Dinwiddie now with the Buffaloes. It's happening for him. Couldn't be more proud. Powell hit the three for UCLA last time down the floor. A chance to tie the game or maybe retake the lead for the Bruins. Adams on the baseline scores and we're all even at 45. Tremendous offensive game tonight. Both teams shooting well, moving the ball, not a lot of over dribbling. Not the isolation plays that tend to ruin the, this most wonderful of sport. Key stretch for UCLA with four of the next six at home and the Bruins 13 and one here at Pauley Pavilion this year. The only loss to at the time number one Arizona. Booker. Nice. Terrific bounce pass. Even better defensive play. The block by Ware. It will stay with Colorado 10 on the shot clock. Colorado's a great home team themselves. They've only lost once at home. Great recovery by the Ware brothers inside, just sending that ball out of bounds. Yeah. When you're undersized, you have to be able to, to deliver your shot quickly. Scott deep into the lane, tries to go to the left hand again, and is fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. That's the second team foul in UCLA. It's a shooting foul. You get Travis Ware for the personal is first. By the way, you and I will be uh, in Boulder for a Colorado Arizona uh, a week from Saturday night. Have you done a game in Boulder before? Oh, I've done a lot of things in Boulder. <laughs> how, how about basketball related rather than all about basketball. It's, a, it's an interesting <laughs> arena. And you know they, they had the most season ticket sales they've had in a while. Well, and, come on, and their Ted program Boyle's, is happening. Yeah, Ted Boyle's gotten this team in a position where they're in the NCAA tournament conversation every year. It's his fourth season there. They went back to back years, 2012 and 2013. First time that's happened since the early 60s. You know, it took them a while. They experimented with different types of coaches, but. They found the right guy in Tad Boyle. And the alumni up there are ecstatic. Now they made an athletic director change in the tenure here just six months ago here up at Boulder. Have to see how that plays out. And another Colorado foul. They got Booker a moment ago and now they get Dustin Thomas for his third personal. You talked about the success in the NCAA tournament for Colorado with Tad Boyle. And last year they lost to a very good Illinois team down in Austin Texas the year before they beat UNLV a very good team in Albuquerque so this is a, a solid program for the Pac-12. That's the 14 foul in Colorado they were only three in the first half. Whoa. alley -oop by Booker and the finish by Hopkins after the steal. How about UCLA doesn't have a fast break basket it's Colorado that's getting up and down and it's a three point Buffalo's lead. Tad Boyle preached all day. We're not going to have any chance whatsoever if we just give them fast break opportunities that's their game. Every time it looks like UCLA is coming back, Colorado answers immediately, but that time it was 
wanted to wear yeah, brothers. Travis, you can actually look at their numbers and, and you'll be able to tell that uh, they're two different players. Travis is 24, David is 12, a three for Booker that is off target, and Travis Ware with a rebound. I like to look people in the eye. <laughs> This is Kyle Anderson who has the ball. I know who he is. And I know who the Ware brothers are. Anderson has eight assists, by the way, nine points. He gets into the lane, tough shot. And it's rebounded by George King. Colorado pushing pace again, streaking down the court. Johnson can't get it. And now a three point opportunity for Scott. The stick back and a UCLA foul. The Buffaloes are running the Bruins out of their own building. The Bruins seemingly in hibernation here in defensive transition. Goodness gracious. Big X and Josh Scott dominant in the paint. Back at UCLA where Colorado has a two point lead. Dave Pash with Bill Walton. Josh Scott, 21 points his last game. He's got 16 points tonight. Josh Scott is the one who's growling, just doing absolutely everything. Exquisite footwork up on top. We've seen multiple left-handed shots. His rotation, his spacing, absolutely perfect. Out in transition when his teammates unable to convert. It's always Josh Scott right there, getting to the free throw line himself. Josh Scott is the oldest of five children. Both of his parents went to Air Force, the academy there right there where his hometown is his monument they met there they were both athletes his mom was a basketball player his dad a football player his next youngest brother just below him josh is the oldest is a basketball player in, in idaho in college he's got two brothers in high school and then a, a youngster who's just getting started still in junior high so congratulations to the scott family what a what an incredible story and that air force boy they developed some real character guys we are so lucky Scott converts a three-point play it's a three-point lead five minutes gone by in the second half they try to hit Powell who shows off his jumping skills he's a pretty good athlete saw him hit a couple threes earlier and I think he scores in the paint you think he's a good athlete that guy started in track and field he was a Carl Lewis type sprinter and long jumper down in San Diego real close to where I grew up and when he was 14 he had a very serious hamstring injury he had to stop doing the track and field and fell in love with basketball. The rest is history. Great block. Travis, Travis Ware. Ware. I know it's Ware. All the twins that I know from this great game. The Grants, Harvey and Horace. Dick and Tom Van Arsdale. The Collins twins, the Lopez twins. You can look at them and tell the difference. I can't do that with David and Travis. I'm certainly thankful that uh, you don't have a twin. Although it would be an interesting three-man booth. Three pointer from King in and out. Last touched by UCLA. So another possession here for Colorado. Travis Ware, by the way, has three blocks, 13 points, five rebounds, maybe playing his best game of the year. His numbers have gone down, his minutes have gone down. He played a lot more under Ben Howland, but they have more depth now. Tony Parker's getting more minutes, although we haven't seen him a lot tonight. Saw him in the first half when Ware got in foul trouble. Three pointer by Booker, Whoa. but there is Johnson with the stick back. Every time it looks like Colorado makes a mistake, somebody else covers for it. Whether it's Josh got that time, Big X. Anderson wow. gets past his man. What is it about him, Bill? Because he doesn't look quick, but he always finds a way to get past his man. It's the difference between being fast and being quick. Quick is a mental skill, it's the change of pace, change of direction. All you have to do is go at a different speed than your opponent. And that's what Kyle Anderson is expert about. Nice penetration and dish. Kings three not there, and Jordan Adams with a rebound. UCLA looking to regain the lead. Here's Levine, not there. Wow. Ben Mills is getting some minutes here in the second half with a rebound. Here's Booker, who, by the way, has a career high eight assists tonight he's been averaging about five assists since the injury to Dinwiddie he suffered a knee injury season under eight games ago Colorado finally maybe finding an identity and how to play without him Adams count the basket and a three-point chance 
back and forth, up and down basketball. Everybody getting a chance here tonight. Now it's Jordan Adams earning a trip to the free throw line as mass substitutions take place along the baseline. Very poor defensive rotation there. You would think you'd want to make a right-handed player dribble with his left hand. <laughs> Hopkins committed the foul, his first. By the way, I, I understand that Luke Walton was supposed to, to be in attendance. Speaking of three-man boots, and we were hoping to maybe get him on. I haven't seen him. Have you seen him? Well, the last time we were here, you, you ripped him on national TV for not sitting up straight, so maybe that's why he got not to come out here into the stand. I didn't rip him. I just suggested that he used better posture. So you haven't heard from him is what you're saying. No, I haven't heard from him or seen him. Have you? No. Outside three point try by Talton. Hit a couple of those in the first half. Cleared by Anderson. UCLA now getting out in transition. And they're rebounding better right now. The Bruins are. Alford. It's been a while. He has really struggled shooting the ball. Maybe that will get him going. Bruins by five. Timeout, Ted Boyle. Gigantic momentum switch here in favor of the home team Bruins. 8 0 run the last 93 seconds. And it's Alford who had been struggling from the perimeter, draining a three to push the lead to five. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, part of Rivalry Week, presented by Wendy's. Bill Walton is the last UCLA Bruin to average 10 points, five rebounds, and five assists. Of course, he averaged more than that. But Kyle Anderson has those numbers, 15 points, nine rebounds, seven assists. And he's the reason the Bruins are playing such a beautiful style tonight as a team, as Kyle's able to knock down his own jumper and set up his variety of teammates along the baseline there. But Kyle's unique skill package sets the table for how this squad plays this year. The Bruins tonight as a team have 24 baskets made, 17 assists. Love that team game. And they got a five point lead. They trap Booker. They have two Buffaloes underneath the basket. They finally get it to Scott. He can't finish. And it's rebounded by Ware. If Colorado is going to have a chance to win, those plays have to be converted. Alford, another three. Got to get out on him quicker if you're Booker. So that's back to back threes for Alford. He was in a stretch of three of his last 20, but he's made two in a row, and it's an 11 0. UCLA run. Reggie Miller's numbers retired in the Raptors here. Reggie, it never bothered him to miss a couple of shots. When you're good, just keep putting them up. And Bryce's dad was one of the best at Indiana. And Bryce is very good too. He's got a beautiful stroke and knows how to play. Finally, he's got a pretty good stroke too. A little, little ex Talton there. And that's his third three. That ends the 11-0 UCLA run. Five-point lead for the Bruins, 11 and a half to go. Need a big defensive stop here for Colorado. Get back in this game right now. Adams curling and hits the short one-hander. Back to a seven-point lead. Colorado back down floor, but so is UCLA defensively. Booker deep into the lane, and he's fouled. And I, love how, where. I love how both teams are getting the ball out of the net or off the glass and up the court with it right away. Time out here in the court of Pauley Pavilion. Penetration and dish. That's championship style basketball. Bryce Alford able to get it done and then little ex Tolton from the opposite corner. We've got a game. UCLA on top of Colorado by seven. Major League Baseball right around the corner. A couple of former Dodgers in attendance here at Pauley Pavilion. Eric Carroll and Sean Green in attendance. Sorry, no Lifko or Phil Jackson. Maybe next time. And speaking of uh, celebrities, uh, tomorrow night on ESPN, just before our game, Arizona, Arizona State, it's the Sprint NBA All-Star Celebrity Game from New Orleans at 7 Eastern on ESPN with our own Bill Simmons and Jalen Rose coaching. I've won in that role and I've lost in that role. I got I got the short end of the stick one time. Oh my god. As a coach? Oh, it's awful. Who of the celebrities that you coached was the worst player? 
As Booker's the celebrity at the line. game, there's no bad players. They're all great. You're just friends with all these guys. You don't want to rip anybody. The one who got me my greatest victory in that game, Deion Sanders. Did everything you could ask for in every aspect of the game. Well, you know, he, he pulled he's pretty good at two other sports. He pulled the squad athlete. together, set the terms of the conflict. He just was, he could not have been better. Volunteered to do all the dirty work. Great, Great offensive play, rebound. Tommy Parker. Speaking of doing the dirty work, it's Parker inside, back to a seven-point UCLA lead. Midway through the second half with Hall of Famer Bill Walton, Dave Pash here at Pauley Pavilion. The Bruins currently second in the Pac-12. Colorado tied for third, a half game behind UCLA. So the winner will be all alone in second place, trailing only Arizona. Talton, no. Parker underneath, trying to secure it, does. The offensive rebounds have not been there for, for the Buffaloes here in the second half. Alford, another three. He's buried three here in the second half. He's completely altered the tenor of this ball game. Those jumpers going down, and now Colorado just keeps falling further and further behind. Goodness gracious. Xavier Johnson, as Colorado needed an answer, and Johnson delivers with a three of his own. It's been a terrific offensive game. Here tonight, both teams hovering around 50% shooting. Anderson from three, and he's an excellent shooter, over 50% from behind the arc on the year. He doesn't take a lot of them. When he does, he's got a high percentage. Here's Johnson, missed the layup, but he'll go to the line. That's the fourth team foul on the Bruins. How nice for Big X Johnson to be able to come in here. His parents in attendance tonight, Sam and Janet. They've been living here in the Southland of Southern California for so many years. Recently moved, there they are, Sam on your left and his wife, Janet. They have an older daughter who's getting her PhD right now. But Sam used to play basketball himself. He played for San Diego State after transferring out here to California from Eastern Michigan, where he was great friends with George Iceman Gervin, the Hall of Famer. And Sam, uh, he came just on the heels of Smokey Gaines as San Diego State was trying to recover. Do you still think San Diego State's the best team in California, even after the loss to Wyoming? They have offensive challenges. They're an excellent defensive team, excellent rebounding team, exquisitely coached. Best fan base in California, unquestionably. If their offense is going, if Xavier Thames can get something going on the offensive end, they've got a real chance. Here's Levine driving, high off the window, no. Scott tracks it down. Here's a key stretch for Colorado, and it starts strong with an alley-oop by Booker to Hopkins. Jerron Hopkins has had a couple of those plays tonight where it just seemed that the pass had no chance of success, but he was able to go that extra distance. A floater, no, but Parker is there after the offered miss. And Parker's had a good second half, meaningful minutes played here for Tony Parker. Never forget that there's never a traffic jam on the extra mile. Parker gets another rebound, his fifth. He also has six points after the Booker miss. UCLA by nine, Levine way off. Colorado looking to push tempo. Johnson, nice move and goes to the offhand, his right hand, and he gets the bounce. For these modern day. Incredible coach, how important that high school coach is for all these young players. His son Clay, one of the all-time great free throw shooters in NCAA history at Pacific. How, how about you? that, Bill? Gary McKnight's son? Yeah, Clay. And how are you measuring all-time great free throw shooters? Just by percentage. Is that, does that work? Well, here's Adams getting fouled by Hopkins. No basket. Second foul on Hopkins. Over the top, Hopkins able to throw it down. A ski of poker continues to shine here in the city of stars. Right now, Colorado trying to find something to graze on right now, but UCLA is just too good. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter. And in part by the new 2014 Scion TC. It's a knockout. 
and Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. Shot of the Santa Monica Pier. UCLA trailed at the half, but six of eight three-point shooting in the second half. And Bryce Alford with three second half threes. And they've all come off great quick passing. That was Travis Ware there, but now Bryce Alford. The way he floats away from the ball and just steps right into it. Does not need any space at all to get this shot up. And certainly, like Zach Levine, not hesitant whatsoever. He has been the separation here as the Bruins trying to continue their strong position as the second best team in this great conference, the Pac-12. Well, they're a really good offensive team. They are averaging 83 points per game. That's the most since their national championship year of 1995. And they're on pace for more than that tonight. Does Colorado have enough firepower to hang around? Right now down seven. Askia Booker's had a great night. He has 11 assists and 16 points. Another three for Alford. And the lead is 10 for the Bruins. Alford four or five from three-point land. You might want to guard him. He's got a hot hand right now. Got a UCLA foul here on Levine. That's the 15 foul, second personal on Levine. Alford having one of his best games. Freshman from Albuquerque, where his dad Steve obviously coached prior to taking the UCLA job. Love the quick release. Love the ability to get it off without having to put it on the floor. Movement without the ball. Booker with 11 assists. He's the first Colorado player to have 10 or more since 2008. Got a foul underneath here. That's the 16 foul on UCLA. They get Norman Powell for a second personal. I'm not sure that Colorado's rebounding well enough to be able to come back and win this game. And the first half, they were doing a good job on the boards. It's hard to rebound, though, when All your shots UCLA's are going making in. threes. So how about some more pressure on the ball? Make Bryce Alford put the ball on the deck. Yeah, they haven't done a very good job. And Booker a couple times has been late getting out on him. Johnson drives down the lane, yeah. banks it in. This guy continues to improve. He had 27 in his last game, a career high. We've seen the perimeter jumper. We've seen him take it to the rack and score. He's got 14 tonight. Parker inside, got stripped. Scott takes it away. Little Lex getting it done defensively. Nice job defensively by Bryce Alford. Scott underneath. That's gold. That should count. Yep, it will. Goaltending on Parker as again Scott went to the left hand. It'll be a three point chance here. Another assist for Booker as well. Big X Johnson down the lane. That little left handed runner, very difficult to read as a defensive stopper. Tony Parker in and out of the lineup all night long tonight. Frustration evident. Disappointed that Josh Scott has had just a monster of a game. He's got 20. David Ware picked up the foul his third, the 17th foul on UCLA. The difference to separation here tonight in the second half has been the advantage for UCLA in experience, in age, and in physical maturity. And then in this little guy right here, Bryce Alford. Four threes, Booker watching him. Going to use the screen here, get into the lane. And now a reset with Anderson, a shot clock at nine. Anderson goes behind the back and cannot get into the paint, but Wesley or uh, Xavier Johnson picking up the foul with seven on the shot clock. That's his first and got a third team foul on Colorado. The nice thing about Kyle Anderson. Check that 17 foul, so it'll be a one and one for Kyle Anderson here. Kyle Anderson, his ability to absorb contact. When guys get physical with him, when they bump him, when they knock him off stride, it doesn't affect him at all. He doesn't have the, the body that we're used to in, in today's world where everybody is just supersized and just huge rippling muscles and incredible explosiveness. But he's sturdy, he's durable, doesn't get hurt, able to play all the time. Keeps himself in great physical condition. He's reliable. He's there every night. You know what you're going to get from, from him. A tip off and he had a neck injury a couple games ago that he played through now some three quarter court pressure here by UCLA after the Anderson free throws yeah, that neck problem came up at Oregon the game we had a while ago it wasn't yesterday 
was a week ago. A lot has gone down since then. <laughs> We've had like six games together since then. How about Powell again? Skies for the rebound off the Johnson miss. UCLA ball. Seven point lead. Five and a half remaining. Powell puts up a brick. Johnson rebounds. Here's Booker in transition. Cannot hit the three. Batted out to Powell. A steal Booker has not been able to penetrate in the second half. For all the things that were going so great for Colorado early on, the penetration and the dish to Little X. And then you've got Dustin Thomas hitting some threes in the first half. And those are just uh, not existent right now. Anderson left open and buries another one. Again, he doesn't take a lot of them because he's always looking for other people to score, but he shoots more than 50% from three point land. And knocked out of bounds by UCLA. He's the guy that's always in the paint trying to draw defenders so he can kick it out to the other shooters, but his ability to seamlessly move into a different role. Great round of applause there for Bryce Alford who opened this game up for UCLA. By the way, Anderson now with his second three has 19 points, 10 assists, and five rebounds. Almost oh. a steal by Adams. It is a turnover as it hit late. Talton touched it last. UCLA ball. And you got to give him a steal on that. Yep. If you, how does Colorado expect to win if they can't even inbound the ball with that type of play? Well, it's a 10 point advantage for UCLA. Now the Buffaloes running out of gas here. They had the lead for a good part of this game, but because of the three point shooting for the Bruins, 11 of 20, they now have a double digit lead. Kyle Anderson with his 13th double double, the most in the Pac 12. He does have a triple double this year, but that was in pre conference play. That's a travel on Adams, no basket. Turnover UCLA. But UCLA is moving without the ball, and that's always good. Don't just try to go into your one on one game. Don't just try to. Get to the free throw line all by yourself. Keep everybody involved and Jordan Adams moving brilliantly without that ball. There's Scott. Thomas from outside. A much needed perimeter shot, a three, and it's a seven point game. That's been when Colorado's at their best all night long. When they get something in the pain area, the defense collapses and somebody's wide open on the perimeter. Actually change it to a two. 81-73 is the score. Now we have a foul underneath on UCLA. So Colorado will be at the foul line when we come back. It's an eight-point lead for UCLA. The Bruins on fire from three. 11 out of 20 and all for doing most of the damage. Anderson has hit a couple as well. Six with two hosting Maryland then at nine in SEC country. Our Saturday primetime game presented by DirecTV. It's Florida and Kentucky. Here at UCLA on top by eight. The Bruins trying to go to eight and three. Conference play, which would put them two games back of Arizona. And the Wildcats have a, a tough one tomorrow night in Tempe against Arizona State. Right now, Colorado, Arizona State, and Cal all at seven and four. Stanford missed a, a golden opportunity to get into the upper echelon of the Pac-12 losing at Washington last night. Tough place to play but a game they really needed to have. They're trying to make their first NCAA tournament in six years. Meanwhile a one and one and the first free throw is good for Xavier Talton and they confirmed the ruling on the floor uh, before the commercial that it was a two point shot by uh, Dustin Thomas on the last possession. UCLA in control here but still has to go up to Cal and Stanford and still has to play at Washington Washington State in the final weekend of the regular season here in the Pac-12. So this race is far wow. from over. Timeout called by UCLA as uh, the shooter went to get his own miss Talton and before UCLA got tied up the Bruins called the timeout they'll have two remaining. Never a good thing when you have to call timeout to maintain possession. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. All right, Bill, you've got a chance now to watch UCLA throughout the year. This is the fourth or fifth game that, that we've done. Based on 
what you saw in the past from them, style of play, talent level, how they play together. What's your what's your take on this Bruins squad? This I week? like it. It's fun. Up and down, ball movement. Just all the things that you love about basketball, the team game, the skill, the fast break, the celebration of life, and everybody just having a grand time and being able to spend time at Powell Library and Royce Hall and the inverted fountain and then get down to the Santa Monica Pier. And as long as we can stay away from the 405 freeway, we're going to be <laughs> just fine here. And Pauley Pavilion looks better than ever, and it's just a fantastic privilege for me to be back here today. Colorado trapping in backcourt. And, and the real test for Steve Alford is. Sendek always coming over here and with Lorenzo Romer coming up. Beautiful pass. And Adams with the basket. It's a nine point lead for UCLA. The Ware brothers' ability to spread the floor. Don't forget Stanford, too, had a really good recruiting class. Coming in next year, rated in the top 15 by ESPN. But, but just look how Cal's best players are from Los Angeles. And all, all these coaches, they've got their work cut out for them and to reestablish West Coast basketball. Three point opportunity for Anderson, fouled on the shot. He's had a brilliant night 21 points, 10 assists, 5 rebounds. The fans here at Pauly just ecstatic. The bench up in applause. A change of pace, change of direction, the ability to absorb that contact and still get the shot that you want off. Are you old enough to remember Aviation High School's Paul Westfall, who was the master at coming down that lane, getting right into you as a defender, and then still flicking up the shot, even though his body wasn't in balance, the delivery, the release. That guy was a tremendous player. Oh my gosh. I remember him as the coach of the Sonics. Yeah. He did a few things before that as well. Yeah, I know. Here's Johnson for three, and Colorado just unable to get enough offense here to outscore UCLA. Colorado played well at times, but to win on the road, you've got to have masterful performances by your key guys for the whole 40 minutes. Here's Powell for three. Well, Ted Boyle said today, as that's off Colorado, because Colorado, after the Dinwiddie injury, a lot of people wondering, are they an NCAA tournament team? And if the tournament started today, they would be their 10 seed, according to Joe Lenardi. They have a high RPI. They have a quality win out of conference against Kansas. But he said, look, we, we've really got four chances in conference to really get people's attention, and we're 0 for 2. That meant the loss at home against UCLA, the loss on the road at Arizona. So he says we really have a lot of games left, obviously, but two more key opportunities to grab national attention, and it starts tonight. And they came out and seemed to respond to that message by Boyle, but I think without Dinwiddie and without Fletcher and Wesley Gordon hurt as well, they just don't have enough firepower to outscore a team like UCLA. Well, we've seen a tremendous amount of heart tonight from the Buffaloes. Little X, Big X, Josh Scott, Astia Booker, Dustin Thomas. They're playing with the passion, purpose, and pride that their coach begged for today. And don't leave out Colorado's need for California recruits as well. So that all the coaches in the conference are going for the same guys. Another assist for Kyle Anderson, his 11th, and a season-high 25 for UCLA. Beautiful offensive basketball tonight by the Bruins. 25 assists? Yes. What's the school record on that? You don't know that by heart? 90 seconds remaining, and UCLA in command. So the Bruins are going to go to 19-5, and 8-3. and three. And it's not wrapped up for Arizona. The Wildcats still have some tough games remaining. Their next three games are on the road. Tomorrow night at Arizona State, they have to go to Utah, which is very good at home, and then a Saturday primetime game at Colorado. And obviously, Ashley not coming back. Arizona has to find a bench. And they right now look like the best team in the conference, but it looked like that at this point last year, and UCLA ended up winning the league. Didn't Utah take Arizona to overtime in Tucson? Or at least right down to the wire. And we'll be in Tempe tomorrow night. Third game. Three days in three cities. Arizona, Arizona State. A Reese's perfect play. 
Take your pick. We've seen just terrific execution all night for the Bruins. Bill. The back cut, Jordan Adams moving without the ball has just been superb. The character that Steve Alford is just desperately trying to, to polish up and unearth. He got so many good guys for UCLA. Now we're getting to see him celebrate this magnificent sport. Saturday night, a doubleheader for you starting at 6 o'clock with Duke in Maryland, assuming they can make it to the venue. And then at 9 o'clock, the SEC, our Saturday primetime game presented by DirecTV, Julius Randle in Kentucky against number three, Florida. Kentucky beat Auburn last night. And the Gators have been so impressive, yet to lose in conference play. That's going to be a great scene and rough. Should be a great game. Coming up next here on ESPN2, Bill. Keith Olbermann. Passion, pride, context, perspective, relativity, history, science. It's all right there. Thank you, Keith, for keeping it real. Happy birthday. That was two weeks ago. No. Really? Where does the time go? Jordan Adams at the line. That's the front end of a one and one. UCLA. About to eclipse the 90 point mark. The ability of UCLA to get out of the funk, out of the lethargy that they were in in the first half. Fine job by Steve Alford, able to push all the right buttons at the right time and Bruins with a comfortable victory here in all aspects of the game. You got a, a foul here as uh, Adams. Going for the ball and Talton jumped in there. How about 54 second half points for UCLA? They were down 40 to 36 at the half. And the Bruins in the second half. And again, it started with those threes by Bryce Alford. And you wonder if you're the coach, you're Steve Alford, and your son is in a slump. How do you handle that? How do you talk to any player, but specifically your son when he's a shooter and you were a shooter yourself and you had slumps and you know what it takes to get out of them. How do you approach that? The coach's job is to breathe life into the team and not add pressure, not put extra burden on people. Don't let them think about it too much. Just get out there and play basketball, practice, run, get opportunities, do the little things. Here's Booker for three, no. But the Bryce Alford with 14 points, one of five Bruins in double figures, led by Kyle Anderson, who has 22 points, 11 assists, and seven rebounds, and really making a case for player of the year in the Pac-12. Solid victory here for the Bruins tonight. The crowd ecstatic at Pauley Pavilion. Rising is one. Bruins just passing it around right now. 92-74, UCLA wins it. The Bruins now. 19 and 5, 8 and 3 in the Pac 12. And when we come back, you'll hear from Kyle Anderson. He will join Bill and I at the table after an impressive showing in the second half of the Bruins and another near triple double for Kyle Anderson. Back in a moment. <laughs> 